I have some work to do as a sort of a prep thing, but Chantilly Lace Twinkle is today my candidate of need. Not much of choice, but of need. I think it's time to clean this one up on the root bowl. It is extremely windy today. I've been waiting, but I'm going to face my back to the wind and hope that will work to protect the mic. Now, this one has been in here almost three years. It has given me some difficulties in the past. I think the adaptation process wasn't as good as I was hoping. I always thought Chantilly Lace Twinkles are vigorous, but maybe I needed to wait with this one to acclimate, but we can see what is going on with this cleanup and get it off to a fresh start, a clean start for the season. So I don't have that many roots to work with. It's just been through a soak of seaweed and CalMag and before the new growth starts, I don't have any new roots at this point, but I have signs of new root growth. So while I was picking away at the lek at the surface to check if my timing is going to be too soon, I saw some white and I thought, hmm, now that we're getting really warm, it's going to take off. And by the time it takes off, I might be busy doing other things. I don't think I am too soon getting in here. Oh, these roots look horrible, but they're still firm. So I'm going to be careful with what I take away. This is the root that I saw while picking through the leka. The white coming here and I thought, hmm, new root growth, let's get going. But you can see the tip is dying off, so there is probably salt issues with the top layer of my leka, which we're going to take care of today so that there will be no more issues. And let's hope that I can get this one sorted out to then grow a little bit more efficiently and effectively than it has been. This is my first clean up, repot, clean up, whatever, since my fusarium with the Francis Fox. I've been extremely paranoid about touching all my tools again, even though you can only sterilize once, in my opinion. I've done it two or three times since, <laughs> in the hopes that I, I feel a little bit more confident touching my tools. Well, I, haven't, I didn't use this one for this fusarium orchid, but the tray and, and all that, you know, uh, can never be too safe about these things. So this root felt firm, but it's garbage. Despite feeling very, very firm. Very interesting. It's, I like to figure out roots as I work with orchids and then sort of remember future reference, how a root system is, giving me a better idea and understanding of how I can repot in future or how the root ball behaves. Is it branching? And that gives me a little bit better understanding for anything that would happen in the future with repots or timing. So that's okay, but that's not. We had some branching attempts that were not too successful here. It has never really been that vigorous for me. So it's not like I'm concerned about it. I'm not going to cut into the rhizome to check it out, even though it is tempting. But I don't want to go along those lines of now everything is a problem. I want to be able to just relax, get back into my mojo of growing my orchids as best as I can and not now be suspicious of everything I look at. Fusarium doesn't just get into the rhizome of orchids, it also gets into your head. Now it's like you see it everywhere just because something is not performing as you would expect. Oh my goodness, now that you've had one case, yeah does get into your head as well. So I'm trying to 
get away from thinking along those lines. What I'm going to do is get my sprayer and really clean out the rhizome here of all this stuff. So we'll do that. I have another orchid to work with today. If this doesn't take so long, then I can just put it together with this video and make an orchid pot puree. That'll be the plan. I would like to move my varicosum, which hasn't bloomed for me, and I don't even know if it is a varicosum, but it was bought as a varicosum, because I need the pot. <laughs> I need that pot, so we'll just see if this doesn't take so long. I'll just add the varicosum on to this one because I want to also pot up my little Lelia Baiensis that came in relatively new to my collection. Because if I'm going to clean Lekka, then I want to not to do it just in bits and batches, you know. Get one little orchid pot for session over and done with and then clean the lecker in one go, sterilize, etc. So this is looking pretty straightforward and I can put it back into its older pot. But first of all, I'm going to wash out the pot and I shall be back very, very shortly. Right, so based on the fact that this one the roots shouldn't be failing as they did. I am not going to this time use two microfibers. I'm going to keep it a little bit on the drier side, if that makes sense for self-watering. Any questions about what I mean by that? I have a playlist of everything semi-hydro, which explains when I talk about drier. So I'm going to reduce the wetness in the pot by only using one microfiber. And I'm going to use large lecker again, which I did before, but there were smaller lecker beads in here. But mainly I used large lecker, which gives me a little bit more of a drier climate in the pot. And all that being said, I don't even need a support. I may just get away with a very simple and easy repot. Now, I still have the calcium and the magnesium and the seaweed solution in the pot, which I'm going to just leave in there for now because it will help me get the leka underneath the loop. Just a little thing that I found out recently that really does help if the situation permits it while I repot because the loop is now suspended. When the lecker goes in, it'll fall in nicely underneath without me having to fiddle around. I won't go mad with the lecker because the roots are quite long. Let's have a look-see. Just keeping her a bit lower so that I can then just lift her up and bring her into position once I'm done filling up. I hope I am protecting the mic from the wind. If I can now just focus and get the lecker in without constantly dropping it everywhere, that'd be great. I had approximately 150 parts per million of CalMag in here and another 50 of seaweed, just because that's how it came out not for any other reason. Let's give it a shake and raise her up a bit. And the leka in the bucket is 60 parts per million of the water, which is great. I finally feel a little bit more comfortable. This is the oldest leka that I have, and I have two more buckets on the go. That will be a rotor. Wait, you're a bit too big. They will be a rotor as to cleaning the lecker and leaching it out as best as possible. And that's it. Woohoo! You're all clean. No excuses now. Not for you, not for me. So I'm going to move on to the varicosum now. I'll be right back. Little itty bitty varicosum. Let's have a look see. If it is a varicosum, 
I wouldn't know, as I mentioned. But it's grown on quite nicely, considering the state I got it in. It was from an eBay seller. And it came with sad little bulbs in the back that were quite yellow, which we managed to recover. And one of the bulbs back here, when I put hydrogen peroxide on it, something really slimy and liquidy slimy oozed out of it. So that was so gross. I'm sure a snail had made its home in there. The hydrogen peroxide took care of that. But it's coming back into active growth once again. There's one there and there's another one there. So I have to be really careful, they're itty bitty. But I want this pot for my Rapiculus lelia biensis. And to see how the roots are. This is also Lekka from back in the day when I was receiving orchids fast and furiously. That was never really leached out properly. But it's also, I think, a little bit too big for the roots, but we shall see. Either way, it's going into a bigger pot. And let's look at the condition of the roots, because this one has been in here definitely three years now. The size of the orchid is perfect for the pot. I want this pot for my Rapiculus lelia, so that's why she's coming out. Yeah, that's three years of you. <laughs> we'll take care of that shortly. Let's have a look, see, as to how the roots have fared. They're not bad. That's okay. Whoa, but the back bulbs, we can take care of those. Yeah, I'll show you that one bulb with the hole in it. It's still there. <laughs> Oh, the memories of receiving this one and cleaning it. So when I got it, these little back bulbs were still intact. And you see that hole? That's where all that oozy stuff came out. And I bet that was a snail in there. Oh, it was so gross. But anyway, there we go. That's taken care of. Now I have a cut in here. Do we have a look at it? I mean, the orchid hasn't performed badly over the years. It just hasn't bloomed. Hasn't grown into anything, I would say, substantial. So I'm guessing that this is the size. I can't really say. Internet pictures just show blooms. I hardly see the full size of the orchid, so I don't even know if I have a varicosum. It'd be nice to keep clean out all the bits in the back here. Just gonna let that rhizome dry out a little bit and then see if we can see anything suspicious in it. While I make my future leck up cleaning process more complicated by snipping all the roots into the main tray. Oh well. I'm very wary of the new growths right at the front where my fingers are. This root looked white, but it is clearly deteriorated. So that's something to be mindful of as I go through because maybe, no, but those are healthy. So these little guys can fool you thinking that you've got good roots, but it's not. These are good. I've got active root tips. Oh, this is good. So no matter what I do, it's gonna be okay. There's a beautiful active growing tip in there. That's great. Back to my little thing about observing the roots while repotting to get a better idea with regards to how they behave in the pot out of my sight. You see this lecker bead here is far too big for this little orchid and its root system. So I'm going to be able to correct that with this repot. Are there two in here now? No, I only potted one. Are they separating? Let's get that moss out. It's been very helpful, and I'm sure it will be helpful in the summer again, but for now, this gives us a better... It's one piece that I'm not going to separate, even though I could. I'm not going to, but I'm glad to see that I have at least 60% of the root system okay. I'm just gonna make sure not to do too much damage, but to get it clean as best as possible. Very brittle, so all these lecker beads dangling around are making it 
so the roots will snap. There's that little cut in the rhizome. I don't see any issues there. Any brown around there, that's just because of the woodiness of the rhizome itself. We're good. Next step, let's give it a little bit of a spray. Let's see if I can remove some of this old sheaths in there, clean it up. Another thing I just want to show you, I love itty bitty roots. I love them. As much as I like big chunky roots, look. Again, look. Oh, isn't that the cutest? And look at these little guys in here. Sunshine, help me. There we go, look. Oh, I think they are so cute. As much as I admire and like big, big, chunky roots, I have to say that the little ones, oh, they're so cute. Okay, no need to perpetuate the problem. They are very fine. They're used to a very wet environment, not wanting them to dry out and then think, oh, hello, and not grow anymore. Got some moss tucked in here that can go. Now, yes, I'm spraying a lot of water and the little growths there. I'm not concerned. I have quite the breeze going today. But sometimes I'm getting slapped by my shade curtain here to the right of me. <laughs> okay, there's a big long dead root. We can still deal with that one. This is quite a long root system. Surprise, surprise. Some of it grew clearly into the pot because you can see how the bottom look there is like kink. So we're going to give them a little bit more room. I was going to crock a bigger pot with some lava rock, but no way because when it comes to repotting in the future with these fine roots, crocking with lava rock is going to be a nightmare. Destruction to die. So first we're going to put some cinnamon on that cut which is going to be interesting with the wind i don't want any cinnamon on my roots not that it wouldn't be able to be washed off but these fine roots are going to be history so i just dunked my paintbrush into some alcohol so i could grab the cinnamon and put it there where i want it very targeted you don't need a big glob for this kind of operation. It was a tiny, tiny rhizome. Okay, next step. My pot. And this, this is the dirty leka that I got the first bag several, several months ago. And these are, is all, everything that I picked out that was clean-ish. Sometimes I still find some that are like that, that can go into the bucket with the bigger leka. Bigger roots are more forgiving, but I've picked out all the little ones to give this root system a better environment. Let's see, how far can I put my leka in? Oh, pretty much fill her up, leave the roots down because they were used to it. Just have to check the direction of my growth. Hmm. which is obviously, it's very obvious, back and it's going in a semicircle. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to even bother filling up with Lekka because the roots were in a reservoir already. The only thing I need to do is make sure that I position her correctly. And maybe I can encourage the little semicircle to go closer into the middle of the pot. Let's see. Here goes nothing. So in this case, I only used one microfiber, even though the roots are fine. Normally I take two, but my leka is so small. That is why I'm balancing out small leka with 
one microfiber, if I only had big lecker available and I didn't have this luxury of choice here, then I would be putting in two microfibers to keep the moisture level in the pot really, really high. But no need. Deluxe, first year I've ever had two choices of lecker. I used to always pick out lecker to make it match the size of what I want to accomplish in the pot. Now, no need. And here we are. If you are a varicosum, I really wanted the Baldin, which is supposedly this orchid is the Baldin. Yellow, typical Oncidium type blooms with black nuances or markings. And that's what I wanted. I have never seen her bloom, so we shall have to wait and see. But that's her taken care of. And I am super happy that this worked out and the roots are long enough to just be down at the bottom. No fuss. Perfect. Wow. Okay, now let me get the biensis and then this orchid potpourri will have been accomplished. Let's go. Fantastic. So there's varicosum back in its place where it belongs, but a bigger pot. And then let's get the biensis. I wonder which biensis is. I don't know. Uh, yeah. You see what's wrong with the picture? Look at them all. And then biensis. Yeah, we're going to have to take care of that right now. Now, my little biensis is not in active growth and it won't be for a long time. So what I'm doing here is actually far too soon. If I wanted to be really, really careful, I would wait, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I need to see what's going on with this orchid. Partially, oh, we've got new roots growing and I want to save what's in that pot because I'm not going to do much different. You see, I don't know if you saw the unboxing. I will add a link below. But you see this? This back part was just stuffed into the pot and well, it never made it. So we'll get rid of that. That was easy. But this is interesting. I didn't see the roots growing with all the little rocks there. Turns out, perfect timing. This is the little growth that matured since it arrived in my care. It was growing this little growth and it's matured now. And that's why I was not expecting anything to be an active growth because of how the roots grow. Now I know Biensis grows new roots when a growth matures. Superb. This is, yep, this is turning out to be a good orchid potpourri. Makes me very happy. Gives me a little bit more of that oomph factor. I know what I'm doing. Now, all this little stuff is so cute. I want to keep it, but she is going into a bigger pot. So we'll have to see where do I, what do I chop away? Because there is stuff that needs to be chopped away. But first I want to protect that root tip there. That's on the lava rock. Just give it a bit of water while I'm messing about getting her situated. There's a lot of dead roots as well. A lot is all relative, but for a little one like this, a lot is probably all it could ever take. So we'll get rid of that and throw caution to the wind, throw the roots into the wind. Oh goody, it's a branching root system. That's great. Always mindful of my snippers and where they go. I try to keep them closed until I am where I want them to be. So I just lost a little piece of lava rock and I, I'm very, very careful with what I drop on the floor. I don't mind little bits of root or something like that, but these hard bits like lecker, 
on the floor. I don't want any dog to consider that a toy, just like a child, they can choke on it. So I'm in the middle of what I'm doing right now. I've got King behind me and now I feel like, like a chameleon with its eyes rolling in different directions to make sure that I know what is going on and that King doesn't go for that little bit of lava rock. This morning I had bird activity in my angrecoids. They were digging through the moss and there was leka and ceramis strewn about a little bit. That was my first chore this morning to clean up around the angrecoid so that he doesn't swallow anything. And I know it was a bird and not king because of the scratching activity. King would have just chewed it up. There would be no scratching or pawing. He would just gobble it up. So I'm just going to pick up that lava rock and we'll continue. This could be dangerous. It's not big, but it can cause real problems. Let's spray you down. Okay, so I have all this good stuff here that I can reuse, and I will. Let me just pour that in. There's itty bitty little seedling bark in here as well. I'm not concerned. That is so tiny and so minute, even though it's gonna go into a semi-hydro setup. Not bothered. That's how it's going to, it'll deteriorate fast enough, but I can't have it this dry in my climate. So first of all, I'm going to crock with some large lava rock at the bottom. Let me see. Do I want large lava rock at the bottom? Those roots get pretty long. No, I'm not gonna make my repots traumatic. But what I will do at the bottom is put some leka in there. Classic semi-hydro, fill it to the rim of where the reservoir holes are. So there's that. Now I have small lava rock here. Let's get the back of the orchid where she belongs and get the tag in first so that I don't poke away and destroy any roots blindly. And the idea, you can see I've got my akadama there. The idea is I am going to be putting up an akadama into the mix. Just put some leka in the hole so nothing gets clogged up. There we go. Yes, this is a delicate operation, but this is what I'm going to do. Mix it up good, seeing as I have the perfect material for Rapiculus lalius already provided in that little clay pot. I'm not going to waste that opportunity. Now in other repottings, I've been using sand over the surface, but with the Akadama, I think I can spare myself doing that. Okay, I gotta be really careful what I'm doing here. These are little, robust little guys, but when in active root growth, nye, abrasions and all that, I think she'll be okay like this. Time will tell. Goodbye, goodbye. Let's flush her through. Calcium and magnesium and seaweed. Only because I have it left and I'm not going to waste it. So whatever comes out brown is also partly seaweed, but it's pretty clean in my books. Oh, she's gonna do great, I'm sure. But I also want to protect the top a little bit with some small lava rock from drying out too fast. I don't want to be interfering with the sprayer too much when she kicks into growth. But just to protect the Akadama from drying out too quickly, little bit of small lava rock. I got this lava rock in Italy, huh, 10 years ago maybe. 
is not the thing. You go to Italy, but what you come back with as a souvenir is their lava rock. Oh boy, was it dirty, and it still is. So despite cleaning, boiling, flushing, rinsing, my goodness, this stuff is dirty. So that's why I had to flush it through again. I put it into, into here and it got all dusty looking. I'm like, are you kidding me? But yeah, this is my lava rock from Italy from a trip I went to 10 years ago. And being an orchid grower, we didn't get this small lava rock in Spain at the time. What do you do? <laughs> I hadn't used it since, can you believe it? I even forgot I had it. So there we are. I'm hoping I've judged the direction of growth correctly. I don't want it to now start going this way. I would prefer it to come towards me this way. This is the latest growth, so we'll have to wait and see if I got it right. There's a little root up here Still aerial, well, no, not so much because the lava took care of it, but that was on top of the surface of the pot as it came. So I'm going to just respect that. And here is Bayensis, all clean, shiny, in a pot that I like. Nothing against clay pots, nothing at all. This is personal preference and aesthetics. And coincidentally, active root growth, perfect. So there is Veracosum again. Now I've turned it the other way around. The back is facing us. The new growths are facing away from us, but I want them to grow into the light. So their training has begun. And now look at this picture. There she is. Much better. That's how I like it. Look at them all. I oh, really have to do an update on them. But yeah, this picture now makes sense to me. Thank you everybody for joining me on this Orchid Pot Puri. I'm hoping it's not too long, but the Chantilly Lace went so fast, I thought, okay, I'm just gonna add on Varicosum and Biensis. I appreciate your time. Always, always nice to be chatting to you while I do my little Orchid chores. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe and take care. Bye.